أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الحمد لله السلام عليكم. Which is the greeting by now you know peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of the Dean Show. All of the shows are exciting because we get to learn about so many wonderful things. But this is an extra exciting episode. One because I have a very special guest, and and two because the topic is a little bit scary now. But I find it, it's an iman booster. It's a faith booster. We know that we used our brain, our intellect, our common sense. We took a scientific, analytical approach and came to this way of life because it's the truth. We didn't blindly come to it. We came to it through using our reasoning. And we studied this book, which is the Quran, the verbatim word of God, which is full of facts, not fiction. Facts, not fiction. And anyone who takes a sincere, humble approach will come to the same conclusion as over 1.5 billion people have all across the world, that there's no way that this book can have come from other than the creator of the heavens and the earth. Now in this book, along with talking about the purpose of life, why you've been created, why you're here in this world, and where you're going when you die, it talks about the unseen world. That's right, the paranormal, the jinn. Some people call it the ghost, some people call it the spirits. But what do we as Muslims, what do we believe? And we are going to get into the details of the unseen world when we come back. Don't go nowhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean this is the Dean Show. 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 Back here on the Dean Show, and this is my sheikh and the sheikh of, of, of thousands all over the world. This is uh, sheikh. Dr. Wali Basuni, who is the Vice President of El Maghrib, and also the Imam of uh, Clear Lake Islamic Center. Did I make a mistake here? No, you, you just got it right, Eddie. Thank now, you. I'm very excited, very excited, because you were with us before, and alhamdulillah, you're back again. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, thank much, you very much, much for being with How was your family? I know last time we were together, you said that, you know, your, your family likes watching the Dean Show. Yes, they, they, they love the, the Dean Show. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Well, this is for your family. We got a gift. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank and, you. And as for your son, how's he doing? Did good. He get... he's, he's doing very good. Very well. So you got very some well. treats there. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Thanks. Alhamdulillah. All right, all right. Since time is so short, I took one of your, your I, I listened to one of your lectures. It was live. And you were talking about the six articles of faith. And one of them, you talked about the unseen world. And it really, the people that were around me, they were getting an iman boost because you were talking about the jinn. And this is something the paranormal, you know, people say UFO, ghosts and all that, and they can't pinpoint it. But Islam pinpoints it, and we talk about the jinn, the unseen world. Can, can we start off and tell us what is, when we say unseen world and when we mention jinn, what is this? Okay. Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, rasulullah. Uh, first of all, all praise due to Allah and his praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and all the prophets and messengers and their followers. Uh, this is one of the beautiful things about being Muslim, that basically you have uh, an authentic source that you can always go back to it, and it will teach you about things that you might not arrive to, to it or to get to know it in, in your own. And most of these things related to the unseen, the next life. Uh, this book and the tradition of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, it told us about another uh, creation of Allah's creations who share with us this earth. We call them al-jinn. Even there is a whole entire chapter in the Quran talking about al-jinn. In so many verses, the Quran told us about the jinn, which is come from the word jannah, which means in, in, in Arabic language, something uh, invisible, something remote, something move fast. Uh, and al-jinn is basically um, accountable beings that Allah created them from fire and they will be held accountable for their actions in the day of judgment. God will judge them 
they were created before humans. They were created before humans. They were in earth. And Allah told us the purpose of the creation of us as humans and the jinn as well. He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا ليعبدون. I have not created humans and jinn for any other purpose than to worship me. To worship me. And Allah have sent to the messengers, have sent to them books, and basically uh, they are nations like us, exactly. Uh, and they share with us this earth. The only thing that Allah created them in a way that they are invisible to us. As he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah 7, he said, la tarawnahum. That the Satan and his basically uh, uh, kind, they see you from a position where you cannot see them. So we, can't, we can't see them, but they can see us. Absolutely. Everything we're doing, they can see us. Yes, they, they see us, but we cannot see them. Yes. We cannot see them. And in a very rare uh, cases, very rare cases, where humans and jinn can uh, interact with each other or basically cross the lines, and that's where people maybe see things which is very weird, unusual, and they will, be, maybe it's, it's a jinn, it's a jinn. So there are rare instances where people cross that line. They're not supposed to cross the line. No, they're not supposed to cross the line. And that's why, uh, like one of the great Muslim scholars, like Imam Shafi'i said, if anybody claimed that he sees jinn all the time, he's a liar and we will not accept his testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, and because Allah said that the default rules, that you don't see them while they can see you. That's why the Satan and basically his followers uh, and the jinn in general, uh, they can see us, but we, we can't see them. And that's why they can whisper to us. They can basically, sometimes we're in very incidents, rare incidents. They can even harm humans or terrify humans. But Allah created them to live normal life, basically to have their life. They, have, they don't bother themselves uh, by our existence. Exactly like when you have so many things live maybe in your house, they have their own life and they basically, some insects, some bacteria, viruses. There's so many things lives around us, so many creations. Um, uh, they live and share with us the earth, but they have their own system, their own life, and we have our life as well. Can you in English define it as uh, genie, spirits? Uh, how would you in English translate the word? Uh, is there a way to do that? You know, every language is uh, impacted by its own culture. Yeah. Um, one of the interesting things about this word, even the jinni word, comes from the jinn, which is Arabic word. Because basically, most of the English speakers today are uh, Christians. Uh, in Christianity, the concept of jinn is not something they are familiar with. For them, there is angels and there is humans. And basically, there is those angels, fallen angels, the one who disobey God, like the Satan, for example, that will be originally an angel. These uh, evil souls or these uh, uh, rebels in heaven, the, the rebel against God in heaven and follow the Satan, they are demons. For us, we don't see the Satan as an angel. We believe angels are creation, that they were created from light versus the jinn, they were created from fire. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, min marijim min nar. I created the jinn from smokeless fire. Uh, also, the Satan himself told God, I'm not going to prostrate myself before Adam. I was created from fire, and he was created from the clay, mud. So you see clearly here, this is a big difference between us and uh, basically the uh, Christian traditions they don't see that as one of the creation, the, the jinn, like the way we see it. Uh, versus you will see uh, Jewish, uh, basically, in Judaism, you will find trace of that uh, belief of jinn that also some uh, suggest that according to passages and, and their book, it were created from fire and air. Uh, so many of modern maybe uh, uh, group among uh, modern Jewish, maybe they will not they, believe in, in, in the existence of the jinn. But originally, it is a doctrine that exists 
uh, among Jews. But it's not something you see it in Christianity. Let, let's take a break there, and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. He is the maintainer. Coming to the truth requires two things. It requires deep thinking that you've already done, but it requires another step, and that's courage. If you have the truth, but you don't have courage, you won't stand up for the truth. And that's as good as standing up for falsehood. I, I would say this thing that you just told me, it's not in the scripture. And they would say, a marginal note added by a scribe, yeah, okay, we know that. And I'd be thinking, if you know this is not the Bible, why are you preaching it as if it's gospel truth? Back here on The Dean Show with my special guest, Dr. Walid Basuni. Sheikh, tell us now, we know that, as I said earlier, in Islam, correct me, you're our teacher, that we used our brain, we used the common sense and it, what's intrinsically in us also to come to this truth, that there's only one God, we worship Him alone, not His creation. And we believe in all the messengers of God, including Jesus, Abraham, Noah, Moses, they all taught the same way of life, Islam, complete and uh, total submission to that one God, and that's how you get peace. So now, there are certain tenets of this faith, and one of them is to believe in this unseen world. Now, can we attribute now when people, they talk about the UFOs, unidentified flying objects, they'll even have this paranormal activity going on in some of these, they say haunted houses, they felt like a presence of something, something even by the graveyards. Can we pinpoint it as Muslims that this is the work? Because they'll have films based on a true story, not fiction. These yes. are events, and they bring in like these you know, uh, ghostbusters to come in and they're seeing this paranormal activity. They can't figure it out. Are these the jinn? Yes, very possible. I saw some of these documentaries. Uh, you uh, seen documentaries. it too? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I saw some of these documentaries and, I, uh, and there's a lot of films even came lately about exorcism and stuff like that. A lot that. of them, yeah. And basically, I think I was trying to say earlier, yes, maybe the people don't believe in a creation it's called jinn, but they still believe in the concept of demon. They possess humans or can harm or, or bother or, or hurt or scare even people. Yes, we do. The prophet, for example, said uh, that the jinn among them who fly. Mm -hmm. So some of these unidentified objects, the flying, it could be the jinn that you see them flying. Um, you come across them. Also, we know about the jinn that they take, they change forms. They have the ability to change forms. They come in the shape of different objects, can come even in the shape of humans, a shape of animals, certain animals. Uh, so basically you might notice them or see them and while they are in one of these forms, that's very possible. Also, we know that among jinn who lives in houses and we, we, they known as al-awamir, where they live in the house, where they live in the house. So many times you might, there is nothing in your house, you might hear something or you feel something walking or a presence of some, you feel certain energy like around you, but you don't see it. And this will be the jinn. For us as Muslim, we know that this is normal. Basically, you live your life. You, they're not supposed to harm you. They're not supposed to bother you. They have their life and I have my life. And for us, there's extra things, which is, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us uh, there are so many supplications, so many uh, uh, basically prayers that we do as Muslim in the morning and the night when we enter our home. And when we say it, we'll be protected from such uh, 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 jinn because the rule goes like this. Allah said in the Quran about the jinn. There's a whole entire chapter in the Quran called jinn, Surat al-Jinn. وَأَنَّا مِنَّا الصَّالِحُونَ وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكَ among us, the righteous, the good ones, among us, who's not like that, who are nasty, who like to harm people, like, like what you see in humans. Yeah. Some of them gangs, some of them are, you know. Same like thing on the other side. Sun, absolutely. Okay. Among them, the righteous, the nice one, the good ones, and, and so forth. Uh, and basically, there are different. So you might come across among one who really would like to harm a person or, or, or hurt them or... Uh, they hate the righteous people. Sometimes they try to harm them, and the maximum amount of harm that they can do, uh, they can possess, and even can reach to killing the person. They can, it can reach to that level. And, and we have so many incidents, and in, in, uh, historical incidents, that they did such thing. Yeah. Now we know that. Look, God Almighty, He's the most loving, the most merciful. He forgives all sins. But if you die. 
associating a partner with the one who created you, you die on that. You can still repent, am I correct? Before you die, but if you die on this, what we call in every shirk, associating partners with God, you in the hellfire forever. Is this correct? Yeah, this is basically the most dangerous thing to yeah. do. Yes, Allah said, if you, Allah will never forgive this sin, which is to associate other with Him. Now, my point here is, is because we'll see, again, paranormal things, unexplained, like a statue will come and there'll be some tears from it. And you'll see like some sounds come out of different uh, idols and, and, and people, they, 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 they get fascinated with it. Or someone will come and they'll say, in the name of Jesus or in the name of this person, and then the person's healed. And can it be that this is the jinn working in these situations and deviating people? That's possible. That's yeah. possible. Some of these... Unnormal th unnormal I, I heard, let me just add, I'm so sorry that I heard that sometimes the jinn, they can go into a, a person and they might have a stiff arm or something. And then someone will pray in the name of, you know, the creation of God, which is only supposed to pray to the creator. And then the jinn comes out and the person is like, wow, this really must be because of who they supplicated in the name of so-and-so. Uh, say the, the, I think, it, 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 yeah, you're right, you're right. I'll tell you something historic. Yeah. It's interesting, similar to this. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad, yes. the people used to go to the idols that yeah. they used to worship beside God. And the idol will talk to them. Can you imagine a piece of rock talking? The idol was will talking talk to, to them. them. Yeah. And they said, Muhammad, look, these idols are God. They're talking. They're talking to us. And the Prophet Wasallam basically proved to them that this is not God. If, even if they talk, they don't deserve to be God because this is not the Creator. There is no multiple gods in, in, in heavens and earth and, and all these things. God cannot be in the shape of human. God has the divine attributes. It's not an object. You move it from one place to another. So even if somebody claimed that this is, I call the name of whatever and was healed, does not prove that this is a true or that human beings can be God because, again, human beings cannot be defined like human. And it could be from the shaitan and his follower from the jinn because one of the, the Satan's goal, he said to God, I will deviate humans. I will deviate them in any way possible. That's his main mission. His main to mission. To make us go astray. That's why God in so many times in the Quran said us, he is your enemy. And take him as an enemy. Whoever take him as an ally, whoever will trust him, he will only uh, uh, basically uh, be among the losers. That's the shaitan, the devil. The, the, the shaitan, yeah. devil, which is he's one of the jinn, one of the jinn. So, okay. And he has so many followers among the jinn themselves. So he has task. He sent people to, de to deceive people, deviate people, whisper to people, inspire people to do what is evil and wrong. So that's very possible, some of what you can, what you see, like, uh, you think, oh, this is, that means he's upon the truth. You know what, magicians use this uh, through across the history. Uh, they did this with Moses. They were never upon the truth. Pharaoh was not upon the truth. Uh, truth cannot be recognized by these abnormal things. Truth can be recognized, as I said in the beginning of the of this episode, is by looking at the evidence, looking, using your rational uh, why of analyzing the truth and knowing that this is the word of God or not? There is this worthy of being God or not? Now we will also hear about seances, where people will come together. Some some very uh, prestigious people. They'll go to these seances and they'll do some kind of voodoo, this, that, and the other, and they'll call upon and they'll see like someone from the past. They'll see their grandfather, or they'll say that someone will speak. They'll hear a voice, and, and then they end up worshiping what they call spirits. Yes. Something that now uh, yeah, can be related this, back to the gym? Abs absolutely, that's the gym because the souls, uh, after it will be taken, it will not be just left to room freely. So that's the gym. And uh, uh, one of the things that the Satan has, one of his tasks that he appointed for each and every human, one gym to be in charge of basically uh, deceiving that humans and, and working on him and inspiring him to do what is evil and bad. And that gym knows that person very well. So you might come to you in a, in a shape of your father who passed away or something. In the shape of your actual father? Absolutely. And he wow. comes and he comes like that and he talks to you and if you, you see it. Uh, so this is very, very possible. That's very possible. Uh, and basically, in this case, again, you will see that this is not the way I recognize the truth. Uh, let's hold on. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't 
become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat, and then go to the bathroom. This is not God. Look at problems here. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshiping? Because yeah, it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshiped God. Who protects us from hunger? Back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking about the unseen world, the jinn. And we talked about people having seances, people seeing maybe their grandfather from before or their uncle, father, and then the jinn, you know, telling them, giving them some kind of power, doing, can they do favors for people? Like, you know, get them thing, information, like the people who do like the, the, you know, the Ouija ball or what's that, the, the crystal ball, they come in and they tell you certain things and you're blown away. Again, the jinn? Uh, I have a, a, a real a, a, a sister came to me and she yeah. said she has this she said since I became 13 years old I was gifted uh, I have the ability to read cards yeah and I can tell you some about your future I don't know something I said how's that started she said I went to a, a person who's known of things like this she said he stripped me completely he put me in a in a bed I was 13 years old 14 years old at that time and he covered me with the sheet and he started doing some weird prayers and you know spell me and after that I was not normal for a while and after that I was gifted that's what she called and she said I used to tell the teachers and the people in the school about things related to their life their homes what's going to happen to them sometimes correct sometimes not then she said I became Muslim later on and the moment I became Muslim she said this has become a very strong struggle with me. I always feel this energy coming, pressing me, and I, I had very hard time, headache, like voices in my head and stuff like that. And she asked for, for my help and advice. And one interesting thing, I asked him, how would you, you said gifted, what that means? She said, when I look at these cards, I will hear certain voices in my ear, and basically I will tell the person based on the echo of what I heard. Uh, to that person what happened to them or might happen to them in the future. But she said, even I was so-called gifted girl, but I never lived a happy life. And my point is that those who the jinn help, they never help them and to give them absolute power. That's why in the history of humanity, everyone used jinn. Look at across the history of every nation in the past who used jinn and magicians. They never ruled the world. They were not the richest people in the world and, and so forth. So basically, even the jinn offered to help, they enslave that human. They will not just do it for favor or let them go free. We're, we're, we have a few more points. We're going to, inshallah, God will have to do a continuation to this part two. We just opened up. This is like an introduction, but for the person that maybe might not, you know, uh, uh, get to see part two, should people A, be fearful of jinn? Should, and how could people be protected from those evil jinn harming them? I'll tell you something, that jinn are afraid of us more than we're afraid of them. More? Yes, we are way stronger than jinn. We, jinn are very weak creation, very weak. He basically, you have a shape, you have a body, uh, they don't have that ability that you have, that you, this is your earth, this is your place. Basically, you're more dominating. There's no doubt about that, that they fear us more than we fear them. Uh, that's one thing. Two, uh, the, the more you think about them in, in, a, in a way, yes, you, you will be scared because you don't see them. You're all scared for them that you don't see. But the moment you start looking at them, you know what? They have their own word like I have my word. It's like so many things live in my house, so many in my backyard, in this earth with us. We, we don't know about them. So don't bother yourself about them. Uh, three, no doubt that reading the Quran, prayer, is a, basically is the best way and form of protection uh, for yourself. Uh, and they cannot even come closer to you. Uh, I don't know if we have a minute to share this something. Uh, One minute, yeah, please. Well, yeah, I, I remember I was reading on somebody who possessed with with jinn, and that's a true story. I, is I'm, this like a, a, a what what people would say is an exorcism? Yes, uh, and and I, I have I'm, I'm, I witnessed that myself. What happened? Tell us. And one of the things that happened, basically, after I read on the person and, and he was uh, cured and his body was cured of that, the moment we walked out, I heard lash 
on his back, like somebody with a web hit him on his back. And he jumped about two feet in front of me. I immediately run to this guy and uncover his back. And I see the mark in his back. This guy with me for the last at least 24 hours, I was with him. Now, 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 you're a sane individual. You've never been uh, locked up in any psych ward or any of that. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Okay. And I saw that with my own eyes yeah. on him. And basically, I saw how angry they were at him because we free his body from this uh, evil, uh, uh, whatever you call spirit or, or jinn. There's this jinn. And later on, when he was basically, they come back to him and I read on him. And when I asked him, did you the one who hit him? He said, yes, and this is a very strange voice. And he said, why did you do that? He said, I, I, I hated, I was so angry. And I said, why you didn't hit me or my friend Adil, which is a person next to me? He said, I wish, but I cannot because you have did your prayer today, your morning prayer. You've been saying your adhkar, the, the supplication, the prayer that you do in the day. And I, and I cannot even reach you, I cannot harm you. It's not about me, anybody like this, me or the other person with me. But the more you remember Allah, the more you have this faith with Allah, you are protected. You are strong. You are stronger than what, than anything else in life. This is part of Islam, the unseen world. Paradise, the hellfire, the delights. If you obey your Lord, do the good things He wants you to do. You got paradise and the hellfire. If now you want to live according to your desire, you disobey your Lord, there's the ramifications of that. The day of judgment, this is part of the unseen world. And the unseen world of the jinn. You told us how we can be protected. Obey the Creator. Obey the Creator. Pray to him, submit yourself to him, and God said, Inna the shaytani kana da'ifa. The plotting of the shaytan, the harm of the shaytan is very weak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My servant, my servant, you have no power over them. You just submit yourself to your Lord, be his servant, and be basically obey him, and he has no control over you. He cannot harm you. Neither him or any one of his followers. That's the key, being Allah's servant, being his slave. Yes. May Allah protect us. May Allah protect us. Thank you. Thank and you. we look forward to doing another episode on the jinn. Uh, you're it's, welcome. <laughs> all right, all right. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. That's the unseen world of the jinn. And you know how to be protected. You heard it. You've got to obey your Lord. Do all the good things he's told you to do. And they're weak then. But now... You make him strong by being weak in your deen, weak in your Islam, weak in your submission to the one who created you. Now you set yourself up for problems. Don't have problems. Turn to the one who's the source of all happiness and peace, the one who created you and do all the wonderful things that he told you to do, and you'll be protected. You'll be protected. We'll see you next time on part two of the Jinn, the Unseen World, with Dr. Sheikh Wali Basuni here on The Dean Show. We'll see you then. Peace. No speech is better than to do that, to call people to Allah and to do the work. No speech is better. No, nothing is better than that. Is it true that if one person on the Allah giving you the ability to guide someone with Allah's permission, the Creator's permission, that is better than everything in this world? Better than the whole world and everything that's in it, in, in another narration, it's better than the best of wealth. But if we really felt that, Eddie, would we not be give, out giving down? And this is something that we encourage all the MSAs, all the Dawah organizations, the masjids to get this. We want to print more. We give these to the non-Muslims for free, for free, for free. We want our brothers in humanity to become our brothers in faith. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show. We're going to be continuing on talking this week about the unseen world, the jinn. The jinn. We know that. Islam is something rational, it's logical, everything in there just makes good old common sense, has answers to all your problems, solutions for everything. This week we're going to be talking about something that we believe in, this unseen world. We did a part one, you can go to thedeanshow.com, the vice president who's with us today of the El Maghrib Institute, he's the imam of the Clear Lake Islamic Center, Dr. Sheikh Walid Basuni. He's going to continue answering some of the questions we have about the jinn, 
the unseen world that's around us. They see us, we don't see them. We want to know some of their tricks. We want to know how they live, how they eat, what, you know, the communities they live in. And this is something that's going to help to strengthen us so we can be protected and so we can be and continue doing God's will so we don't fall to the tricks and the traps of shaitan. And we'll be right back with Dr. Sheikh Waleed Basuni. Don't go nowhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, wa peace be unto you. Allah. How are you, Shaykh? Very good, very good, alhamdulillah. We're going to continue on talking about the unseen world of the gym. People can go to thedeanshow.com. You have your own private section there, and they can see part one of the show we did about the jinn. Now, I, I, I want to get into it. It's a very, very interesting topic. And we know that, you know, 90% of the world, they believe what's already intrinsic in themselves, the belief in a creator. Now, if you believe in a creator, you also, you know, you believe what he told us about the shaitan. The devil who's out there, and you mentioned in the earlier show, his mission is to mislead us in many different yes. ways. So we want to talk now the relation between when we say shaitan, okay, the devil, and then this unseen world of the din, jinn. Are these the same or are they different? Are they one of a like? Please continue okay. from here. Bismillah. Uh, the Satan, uh, some Muslim scholars uh, believe that he is the father of all jinn, like Adam is the father of all humans. And they said the Satan is the father of all jinn. Uh, and they said the father of the jinn and the father of human. They had this conflict in heaven. Basically, uh, when Allah ordered uh, the Satan to prostrate himself before Adam. And one of the people who believed in that uh, will be a great scholar. His name is Zuhri ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, and others. And they said that since Allah said he, is, uh, he can see you, him and his offsprings so basically he referred to all the jinn as his children his children that's why they said he's the father of the jinn and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best but we know some, some stuff about this creation which is the devil first of all uh, the devil was a jinn uh, because very clearly he said about himself that he was created from fire Allah subhanahu Allah said in the Quran surah al-kaf uh, the Satan was one of the jinn. But originally, he was not evil. He was not an evil creation. He was a very righteous jinn. Uh, worshipped God, uh, submitted himself to the Lord. And he was even raised to the level of angels. That's why he was with the angels when God told the angel to prostrate himself before Adam. But his arrogance led him to reject the truth to reject the order of Allah. And that's why anyone who rejects the faith out of arrogance, feeling that I'm too big to submit to the Lord, he's just basically following the footstep of the Satan. Um, this Satan is so arrogant that he tried even to copy God. Like God have uh, uh, basically appointed for every human angels to protect them, to inspire them to good. So what the Satan did, he looked at his followers and his, some of his children who follow his footsteps, and he appointed for every human one of his followers to inspire them to do bad. Also, the Prophet ﷺ told us that uh, Allah told us in the Quran that Allah is thrown above water. It's not this water on this earth, somewhere uh, up in the heavens. But the Satan went down to earth and he put his, uh, his throne on a water. And it's very interesting. There is a hadith says water, but there is another narration says on the sea. And in Arabic language, the water, ma, and sea has completely different meanings. In Arabic language, when he said sea, it means not a fresh water. So that means his throne, where he sat, where his kingdom basically is, and somewhere in a salt water, not a fresh water, not a river, someone somewhere in oceans or in one of the seas. And basically, he sent his followers, he sent uh, uh, basically those who listened to him and, and worship him instead of God. 
to put uh, evil tasks on the earth, evil tasks, inspire people to kill, to fornicate, to steal, whatever uh, evil tasks that they do on, on earth. Um, we know also a little bit about uh, the, so he is the father of the jinn, but, or one of the jinn, let's say, according to some of the scholars as well. Those jinn among them, the worshippers, the righteous, and among them, the evil and the bad. You have some Muslim jinn also? Absolutely. Okay. And you have, and from every religion, from every group, uh, that's why when, when the, Allah said in the Quran, صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ We have let some of the jinn listen to you, Muhammad, when you're reciting the Quran. So they went back to their people. They said, this is, sounds very similar to what Moses used to recite, the Torah. So basically, the chose also among them there have knowledge of the Torah and the Bible and the David songs and so on. So because they were existents before Adam. So they have met and known and seen all these prophets and all these messengers. Uh, basically, among them the good and the righteous, and among them the bad and the one who basically like to harm others, like to hurt others. They intermarry. They have children. Allah told us that they have children. Uh, they die like humans. They exactly. die. The jinn die. Absolutely, like okay. us. Uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ used to supplicate to Lord. He said, "You are the most. Li you are the living one who never dies." And humans and jinn die. Do the jinn die when the human being dies? Who they're not necessarily, but their lifespan is similar to our lifespan. Yes. They die exactly like us. They live and they, they die. Uh, also, what we know about them, they basically, as I said, they intermarry and they eat. They eat also. And they eat and they drink. Uh, how they eat, how they drink, how they consume this, we don't know. Exactly like you will, someone was telling me, uh, how they eat if, they, if you can't see them. I said, you know what, there's a lot of things, feed on things, and you don't know how they consume. Is it by eating it, digesting it, sucking the nutrition of it? We really don't know. The fly eats off your food, doesn't it, when it comes? Yeah. You don't, the food doesn't disappear. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so also we know about them that the Prophet ﷺ said that they eat with their left hand. Uh -huh. And they uh, basically give and take with their left hand, not with the right hand. Uh, also, we told that uh, certain animals can see them, like dogs. They can see the jinn. Uh, and they can notice them. The dogs. Yes, they can see them. Uh, also, uh, one of the things that we know about the, the jinn in general, uh, or the, that they live on this earth. And Allah said that they will live in this earth, they will die in this earth, they will resurrect in this earth, and they will be judged on this earth. Also, we know that the jinn will be judged exactly like us. Some of them will go to heaven, some will go to hellfire. Those who did not worship God will go to hellfire. Mm -hmm. Also, we know that God sent them messengers and books mm -hmm. through the history to guide them, exactly like the same thing He did to us as uh, humans. As humans, uh, one time the Prophet ﷺ saw a man uh, sitting on the uh, in, a, in a position where half of his body in the shade and half his body in the sun. He said, "This is how the shaitan like to sit. How the shaitan like to sit." One thing we know about their look that this, the, the, the kafir among them, the disbelievers among them, they look so ugly. That's why Allah said, the trees of the, de of the hell, the fruit of it looks like the devils, looks like the faces of the devil. Nobody saw the face of the devil, but humans by nature know it's ugly, know it's scary. We know that he has horns, and like a lot of people, draw the devil with horns. Yes, we know that he has also horns. The Prophet ﷺ said that, that he has horns. Uh, uh, we know that the Satan also liked to order his followers to prostrate before him uh, during the sunset time and sunrise time. That's why we Muslim, we don't pray at that particular moment, the sunset and the sun uh, rise. Uh, this is some of the things that we know about them. Let, let, don't lose your place, Shaykh. They're signaling we got to go to a break, and then we'll continue on from there okay. when we come back. We'll be right back here on the Dean Show. La ilaha illallah All of the prophets would have been labeled Muslims because this essential message was the same message, submission to the will of God. 
This is God talking to you directly. How can I stand behind the pulpit on Sunday morning and preach a sermon that I knew was at variance with the actual taproot of Christianity? Back here on The Dean Show, we're talking to Dr. Sheikh Walid Basuni. We're talking about the unseen world of the jinn. And how can someone, how can we, you said that they're actually, per, they're weak, but are you more susceptible? Because we hear, and again, these are based on true story incidents where people get possessed by the jinn. These, uh, can you say evil spirits? Uh, the, yeah, the, the, the evil among the jinn. Yeah, evil uh, and then they get possessed. So what can a person do? And is a person more susceptible if he's not doing the will of God, of the Creator, obeying Him in His commands, worshiping Him alone, yeah. and, and doing all these things? Do you set yourself up where now you be, make Him stronger? I just want to set a, a rule before, even, uh, if you don't mind, uh, answer this question. Whenever we talk about the world of the unseen, we have to differentiate between two things. Uh, when it comes to the unseen in general, yes. uh, there's a lot of things we can comprehend, yes. but it doesn't mean necessarily we can imagine. Yeah. And this is a big difference between imagining it and comprehending it. For example, I cannot imagine gravity. Yes. I cannot imagine uh, infinity. Uh, I don't mean the car, but yeah. the, the concept. <laughs> okay. Uh, I cannot imagine so many things, but I still comprehend what, what, it, is, what it means. So the word of jinn, yes, sometimes you cannot imagine their existence and how they live and how they possess and how they do all this. But I can understand that, comprehend that. Yeah. So a lot of people, because they cannot imagine it, they cannot visualize it, they rush to deny it. Yeah. And this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. So I just I want to make that distinguish. I think this is a very important uh, point. Yeah, because yeah. you see that. Yeah. As for, yes, they are weak. Sometimes they harm humans. Sometimes they possess them even. Uh, and basically, uh, I would like to say that this is a very rare case. And it's not something... Uh, even easy on them. That's basically because it's uh, against the nature of their life. That's not, they're not, that's so not supposed rare. to. Rare and it's not supposed to happen. And it's basically getting out of your way to do it. So it's not something the, uh, pleasant for them, uh, pleasant for them. They, they're not very um, enthusiastic about doing things like this. Yes. Very rare case. Most, I, I have seen a lot of cases in, in my life uh, people come to me and said, hey, my son is possessed, my daughter, or I am myself possessed. And I can tell you 90% of the cases are not true, not true. But there is cases which is absolutely true, where there is a possession, whereas houses are basically uh, full of gin, and they want these houses for them, and they don't want anyone to share this house Have with you them. ever walked in a house like this? Have you uh, ever yes. been in a situation? Yes. I've been, can, can you share? I've, I've been once in a in a situation like this where uh, basically a lot of weird things happen in this. I was at uh, that time in, in high school, actually. Uh, and uh, we went to uh, one of the houses, very old house, very old house. And we rented this place. And basically a lot of weird things start happening. Doors opening, closing, lights goes on and off by itself. It's not an electricity problem. It just not... It's not normal at all. It's completely normal. And one of our friends starts acting very weird and basically sleeping all the time and starts saying and doing things very weird. For example, which is impossible to be, he's not capable of it. He will be sitting in the room with someone and he will tell, there is someone now in the street, so-and-so person coming up and he's going to knock on the door. He's, someone's coming to the door and he's saying, hey, someone's going to knock on the yeah. door. You don't even see through the he, wall. And there is no any logical possibility that this no, this person know that this person is coming. Wow. It's impossible. And he would say, this person is coming. So this is very weird. And he will start y using very weird languages, words, that this person, we know him for years, uh, he's not familiar with these languages at all. So basically, when we start reading on him and, and stuff like that, we, we found the reaction was very severe, very severe. Weird, weird voices coming out of him and screaming and, and hitting and stuff like that. Uh, so when finally we were able to let that evil spirit on him to talk, he basically said, uh, this is our house. 
and we live here and you guys have to leave this place. So I, I told him, I, I, that's not right. I rented this place from the guy upstairs who owned this apartment and I have a contract, you know. <laughs> he can this is not right. If you have a problem, take it upstairs. But you, most people would like, have fled and said, hey, no, I'm out of here. You I'm were like, having a dialogue with Absolutely. Him. And I think that's the best why, actually, if you've ever been in a position like this. Yeah. So I said, if you have a problem, take it upstairs with the guy. Is he th talking to the, per to talking the person? Talking to the person, the person very completely different, different voice, voice, tone, and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, alhamdulillah, we were able to... Uh, Saddle on a way that he, he said he would leave his body, but he said, you guys leave immediately. Anyway, it was one experience, one of the early experiences I have seen. One of the things, I remember a, a group of uh, uh, psychiatrics. Uh, yes. We had a debate in Bahrain uh, with a group of psychiatrics about the issue of possession. They denied. And the reason they denied, because they denied the existence of jinn. Yes. So I said, first of all, we cannot talk about possession uh, if it's possible or not. If you don't believe in their existence, and if you don't believe in their existence, you don't believe in what's in the Quran. Al Quran stated clearly there is jinn, and in so many verses. As for the possession itself, the person possessed with jinn, I said, you cannot deny the reality, what you see with your own eyes. Forget about debate over text. I'll give you one thing I do whenever a, a case like uh, I had. Uh, I will say, because sometimes they trick you, even the, the person himself, the person himself, he can act like he's possessed because of psychological problem. Mm -hmm. And I have seen cases like this. But one of the things I see, if you really a jinn, I said, I will put an object in the side, in the other side of the room, like the corner of the room. I will say, knock it down. Like a bottle, yes. tissue box. And if he knock it down, I know that this is not human. Yes. Because there is no way possible in a closed room, no air, nothing, and this is will be knocked down like this. Yes. Accidentally or it's impossible. So I know that I'm dealing here with the with the jinn. And this has happened several times. Several times. I remember even one time we did this in the prison of a psychiatrist himself. You were uh, doing this uh, in front of him. He he asked us to be Involved to, to, to what we call the, the exorcism, exorcism, Islamic, yes. and reading the Quran to get oh, the jinn out out of the person. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so when you have cases like this, all what you do is you read the Quran on the person, and you have a dialogue. Sometimes you can when intellectually with the person. That's why I'm saying the Quran have very strong power over them. They they, they scream. They cannot take it because they felt the power of the Qur'an over them. SubhanAllah, it's so, so different than humans. That's why I'm telling you, humans are worse than uh, jinn. You read the whole entire Qur'an over someone, you are like, okay, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but the jinn, you just read, start reading, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. They were so screaming, cannot take it. And I remember one of the jinn said, I don't believe in God. To me, he uh -huh. said, I don't believe in God. I said, you sure about that? He said, yes, I don't believe in it. I said, okay. Then I said, Allahu la ilaha. He screams. Then I will say some poetry in Arabic. Yeah. And he will be listening. And I told him, what's the difference? Why are you screaming when I read this lines in Arabic? And you are very normal when I read this lines in Arabic. He said, I don't know. I said, you're lying. You know. What's burn you, what's really affect you is the verses of the Quran. It's the words of God. And you knew it. Don't tell me I don't believe it. Alhamdulillah, and finally he admitted, he admitted that there is a God, there is Allah, there is a, a exist, and, and so many times even they accept Islam, alhamdulillah, and they will even leave the body of the person. But uh, what I want to say, there is a lot of people also imagine things like this, and I have a lot of stories also, people claim that they have jinn or possessed, and there is nothing wrong with it, psychologically they are basically affected. Uh, psychologically, they go through trouble, hard time, and they imagine that they and, are possessed. And then they they, uh, they act like one. Let, let's uh, attribute we, it to jinn. Let's uh, take a break. We'll be right back with more here on the D Show. He was born about 60 years ago in former Yugoslavia, today is Bosnia. After Second World War, can you imagine today you have one child, you have too much. It's important that we realize that Islam is a gift. So we believe that in the teachings of Jesus, what is left, there is truth in there. But the truth has been mixed up with paganism and with nature worship and so Islam has given you a pure straightforward way of approaching monotheism
Back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking about the jinn, the unseen world of the jinn with Dr. Sheikh Wali Basuni. Tell us now, you, before we went to break, you said uh, these are rare cases that a person will get possessed by the jinn. But in cases that people do, and let's say they want to get some therapy, all right? Now, you'll hear weird things. People out there who uh, tell them to do, you know, uh, I've, I've heard this myself, you know, go get a chicken, and then they write some weird stuff. They give you some amulets to put on. All these weird and bizarre uh, things. Is this, and does it have anything, I'm sure you have more yeah. experience, uh, does it have anything to do with Islam? And what's the proper way to do the proper, proper healing of getting this uh, jinn out? Uh, okay, first of all, the best way to do that is to read Quran, is to call the adhan, like in the house, for example, there is presence of jinn in it, you read the Quran in it, the Prophet says, if you read Surah Al-Baqarah, the jinn will not enter this house, when you enter your house, you say, Bismillah, you call the adhan in this house, you start praying in this house, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take this away. Uh, that's one thing. If somebody possessed, you read the Quran in him, and you can read on your own self. And you know one person, he read on his own self until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure him. So that's, that's one thing. The second, uh, basically, also you can read in a water, and you consume this water. And if somebody possessed with jinn, the moment I give him the water, which is read Quran in it, and I blow on it, he will throw up. He would never, if he consume it, he will go have diarrhea, go to the bathroom, start sweating. It will never settle in his body. But the more he do that, the more he protect himself from inside. Uh, as for uh, the jinn, the jinn, they don't like certain colors sometimes. They don't like certain uh, smell sometimes. So some people by experience they know these so they let that person see these colors, see these animals, see these smell senses and that's bothered the jinn and let them leave the place, leave the place and sometimes it can be effective. But anything involved, worshipping jinn or killing or sacrificing or that's calling That's what I mean upon, like the chicken sacrificing that, the jinn. That's, go that's not allowed, that's forbidden. Have you heard of some of these things Absolutely happening? and this is Basically, the jinn use this trick to make you commit the major, the major sin that ever a human can commit, which is basically uh, to offer any form of worship to other than God, and basically to humiliate the humans and to let them go to that low level of being worshiper of the devil or the demons. One more thing I, I want to say here: sometimes, with the jinn possess humans, they can make a physical damage. So treatment can be very effective. Like in certain cases, you might, somebody, the psychiatrist will uh, prescribe certain medication for the person. And I believe it works very fine for them because those gen when they possess human, they may cause imba chemical imbalance in brain and the medicine will balance it out. They might make a physical damage to your hand and therapy and basically operations, uh, some exercise, physical therapy, can return it back to its normal position. So the jinn, position. by possessing you, they did some of these they things? They can cause physical damage, and this is, can be fixed through medicine, through uh, basically therapy. So the modern science, we, as a Muslim, we don't deny or say they have nothing to do with things like this. Actually, they can be very helpful, and basically we... Hand to hand, we work together. So anything that's weird, something that these these weird incantations, something that you know you you would repulse, usually like that's something where it's a red light. Hold on, I need to go check up with with, a, with a true Islamic scholar because you got a lot of people dealing with witchcraft and all that has nothing to do with Islam. Absolutely, it's un unacceptable. Unacceptable. So the only way is, like you said, to reciting the Quran, the verbatim word of God, over this person. These other details are reciting over the water and. Yes, or, or it's a, basically a treatment prescribed by a physician or a psychiatrist that they see that this is a form of treatment. They diagnose the, the problem. And what we hear the difference, we, feel, we sometimes believe that this problem could be caused by jinn. Yes. And that's where maybe some doctors don't agree with us. Now, you'll see a lot of people who right away they say, oh, I, I, I think I got the jinn in me. When you evaluate their life, you know, they're not submitting themselves completely to the Creator. Say the woman's not wearing hijab, you know, she's uh, partially praying, you know, uh, uh, dressing promiscuous, or the, the boy also going to nightclubs, messing around with the ladies. We know in Islam it's marriage and it's test driving. And then they right away they feel like, man, I got this jinn in me or something. Can this be the effects of the sin now, more so? <laughs> 
Uh, see, the, the, the sin, these sins, uh, the jinn doesn't mean possess humans, it means make them uh, collapse and be, you know, they inspire them to do bad. The jinn will be more happy to make you do all this sin than possessing your body. The jinn will be much more happy, happy to have you disobey your creator. Disobey creator than just bothering you or harming you. Yeah. You know, because he harmed you already by leading you to the way that lead to the hellfire. So mm -hmm. he is happy. That's the best thing that he can do. That's the best thing, right? Tell us uh, before we, a few more points before we, we, we're almost out of time. Tell us, you know, I, I remember listening to a story you told us that there was uh, one of this person that he was putting blades in his body, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was a Muslim happened to come in the room and just recite Ayatul Kursi. Yes. And then he wasn't able to do it anymore. Because you shared the story with us? Uh, yes. Uh, the story happened in Dubai. Some uh, uh, performance. He used to put like daggers in his body. And basically he said, I put all these daggers in my body. And he used the jinn. He said, always the jinn observe the daggers. And people think that I put it in my body. I never did. And in that day I was performing in Dubai. And this young man came in, holding the miswak in his hand, and he started reciting Ayatul Kursi. I can see it. He said, I, I can see him from a distance. The moment he, he did that, the jinn ran away. And all the daggers went straight to my body. And I fall on the stage. I was taken to the hospital. He said, after a couple of months, he said, for two years, I have nothing in life but to harm this person and to hurt him back. I was able to get his name, where he lives, and every jinn that I can put my hand on through my uh, practices of, of magic and dealing with jinn, I used to send them to him. And every time they come back to me, said, we couldn't touch this boy. Wow. We couldn't harm this boy. And he said, the reason is always the same. When I asked them why, they said, this boy never missed salat. Never missed a prayer. Never missed a prayer. That's the key, being in compliance with all the things that the Creator told us to do. And that main important thing is the day. It's the, a protection. It's a protection. You know, the Prophet said, Prophet Yahya, John, one addressed his people. And he told them the example of us humans with the devil, like the example of somebody, his enemy, trying to capture him. Then he entered into a castle with have very high walls, thick walls, so the enemy were not able to reach him. He said, this castle is the remembrance of Allah. It's the prayer that the, the person do every day to his Lord. And this is the protection that we as human needed to be protected from all these devils and evils out there. Just a couple more points, a couple more points. Tell us if a person feels, okay, now they really feel that they need to have some rukia done, right? That's what it's called. Yes. And they go to someone, a imam or some, you know, a person that they feel, all right, he can help me. But this person is doing some some things that you know the community say, yeah, go see this man. He 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 makes the lights go off. He go he does this crazy stuff. Is this also a, a red? A, 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 he, that's a red light. Anyone red light. use un, uh, 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 unknown language like weird words, uh, unknown language, or somebody start putting like uh, uh, senses in smoke and and like dark rooms and all the stuff and basically ask you about your mother's name, uh, give me a picture of someone that you know, a piece of cloth, make a fire, ask you to kill s animals or to sacrifice something, even sometimes eggs. To Touching you or touch some stuff like that. Anything man. like that. This is, this is basically uh, baloney. This is baloney. Just, yeah. This is a person who is, a f we call him in Islam, in Islam we call him magician. We magician. call him kahin. Uh, anybody give you uh, basically, fortune tellers also, we call them. Uh, we, he give you, for example, a charm to hang it on you or to put it in your neck or in, around your kids for protection. That absolutely has nothing to do with Islam. The protection is very simple. Pray your prayers, make your supplications the day in the morning, uh, every day ask Allah to protect you. And believe me that Allah always with you. Allah is the most merciful, the most loving God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You just got to obey Him. Yes. You got to do what the wonderful things He's told us to do. And then we will be protected. Absolutely. Thank That's you very absolutely. much. Thank you very much You're for welcome. being with us once again. May God Almighty, the Creator, Allah reward you in abundance. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And there you have it. Some great advice. Be with Allah. Be with the one who created you. Worship Him alone, not His creation. Establish the prayer, the salat, five times a day. And look to please your Lord by doing everything he told you to do, loving everything he loves and hating everything that he hates, being complete com compliance 
with His will, with all the wonderful things that He told us to do, following the example of the last and final message sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and spend your time wisely. Stay away from bad company, bad people, and just live a good life how Allah told you to live it, obeying Him and everything, and you'll be okay. And this is what we need to be striving for each and every day. We'll see you next time. Peace be unto you. I seek refuge with Allah. I seek refuge with Allah. Have mercy on us. Obey your Lord. Submit to Him. Avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord. Repent to Him. Avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord. Surrender to Him. Avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, submit to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Stay away, stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers, O Lord. Have mercy on us, O Have mercy on us, O Lord. Stay away, stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers, O Lord. O Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on our souls Avoid the footsteps of Shaitan Who's plotting, scheming 24-7 Trickery, deception, falsehood, lies Anything to keep you in the firing line He'll tell you anything You have to pray as if everything depends on Allah and it does But you must work as if everything depends on you and it doesn't That's my point you see what I'm saying, man? And I don't like that. I don't like us sitting here. What are you waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? What are we waiting for all these people to come to Islam? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? When they're going to come? They're going to come. Allah going to bring these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put in our hand the ability to do it. Now do your job. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lie is by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lie is by my side I am not afraid to stand alone